All right, all the things are ready. Here goes. Glad you're all here to listen to this in three, two, one. What is a black hole? It is so deep. It's so hard to fully appreciate all of the physics that's going on. You can spend your life studying this. Everything turned on a dime. The Morning Stream. Come over here, Mr. Pokemon Man, and let me get a peek at you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to TMS. It's the Morning Stream for Thursday, May 18th, 2023. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian DeBitt. Hello! Welcome back! Welcome Hello, Brian. Back. Welcome back. Yes, indeed. Uh, Vegas, uh, second Vegas trip of the year, which was really literally a week and a half after we already went. Um, <laughs> right. it's very different, though. I only have... Sure. Like, yeah. it was so different. We spent most of the time with the kids, most of the time at the pool. Um, we had a four-year-old and an eight, eight-month-old with us, so it was like, you know, very busy keeping them busy and, and all yeah. of that, and trying to give Taylor and Dylan kind of, you know, some time out. Uh, where they can go off and do whatever they want to do. Freedom. Freedom. Yes. Some freedom, parental freedom. And yeah. um, it was really fun. We ended up staying at an awesome uh, place that was kind of near the airport, but, you know, not that close to the strip. So, I don't know. It was kind of nice to be separate. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. but then we do yeah. these, you know, day trips to the strip and see all this stuff and everything. Uh, my only regrets about the entire thing, the only regrets I have, is sure. that I ran out of time to see... Shoujo or James and Svet. I was going to try to have dinner with James and Svet. Didn't happen. I hate that. I really wanted that to happen. So next time I'm out there, I'm making that happen. But it just got like, it was just crazy. We always had a, you know, we always had kids with us. So it was impossible for us to like control our schedule very much. For and, sure. Yeah. You but, guys were on, on full time kid duty letting, uh, yeah. Uh, Taylor and Dylan have some have some which was fun it was a really fun thing to hang out with those kids to not feel any stress there was nowhere it had to be it was just like let's get in that lazy river and let's float around that thing for a while I love a pool with a lazy river yeah this one had a nice one too it was pretty good Um, I will say this though so real quick here yeah let's call this uh, my most irritating story of the trip because most of it was very pleasant no issues everything's great Sure, sure. But we're on the strip, and uh, we're walking. This is the first day, too. We're, we're there with the kids, and we're waiting for, actually, our, our, our timeshare is not ready with the room yet, so it's like four hours. We had to just do stuff on the strip for four hours. No big deal. Sure. Kill a little time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, four-year-olds love seeing giant re- replicas of the freaking Eiffel Tower and, you know, all that. It's fun. Of course. Yeah. So we're, so we're, <laughs> we're doing all that. It looks so much like the real one. Right. Says. Exactly. Yeah. Except for the weird homeless guy that's throwing needles at me as I walk by it. <laughs> oh, but anyway, which leads to this story pretty well. So we're walking uh, down the street, down the strip. And, and by the way, um, you know, this this time of week and this time of year, it's pretty good. It's right before the playoffs for the Knights, which is going to get real gnarly in the next day or so. Yeah. Uh, it's in between a lot of things, a lot of cons and stuff. So relatively very small amounts of people everywhere. It's not packed anywhere that we're going, which is cool. great. We're loving that, right? Just big. Ideal. Yeah, yeah, very ideal. It's nice. Uh, so And we experienced that pretty much the whole time. We never had like a line or too many people. I don't even think we took an elevator that had more than just us in it. It was like, it was just so, so wow. easy. So anyway, we're walking down the street. We're just about Tropic, or no, um, uh, uh, the one they're tearing down for the baseball stadium. Um, the Tropicana. No, it's not. It's the Flamingo. Flamingo's going down. Oh, Flamingo. They're yeah. not tearing down the Flamingo. I thought they were. I thought it was the Tropicana down at the end of the strip by uh, MGM Grand. Oh, I was. Missoula told really? me it was. Missoula told me it was the Flamingo. In mid strip, they're tearing. tearing yeah, down? maybe they are. Whole okay, thing they're, out, I, and then they're going to put. A, I could have sworn I saw a news article about uh, Tropicana because that would make more sense with all that space down there. But uh, I agree because it extends like a a ways over there, right? There's a bunch of dead yeah, space. Yeah, I mean, there's no, use. there's no, um, uh, there's no hotels on that side of the street south of that but maybe I uh, there we go tropicana to be demolished for baseball stadium so it is tropicana yeah flamingo's like right in the middle of yeah, everything They've i was got, gonna you say know, the cromwell and the and all that stuff okay that makes more sense to me 
because sure because i was looking at that thing i, I must have misunderstood uh, chris but Anyway, the when I saw it, I was just, we were walking down the middle of that. I'm going, they can't put a baseball stadium here. This is insane. No, no. <laughs> it's already weird. Where everything is already at is already weird. And the F1 thing this fall, what the how the frick oh, are you going to function yeah, it's in here? Crazy. Like, By the, you know, the, you might be confusing because the uh, two of the boulevards that bisect uh, the strip are Tropicana and Flamingo. Yeah, so that's probably be, why. That's another reason it might be confusing. Probably why. It makes sense though, because that yeah. Tropicana. Take it. It's ugly. It's dumb. Get rid of it. It is. Yeah, it's unfortunate. They just they just didn't never knew what to do with that, right? The theme is a hotel. Uh, <laughs> yep. Here's a here's a big white uh, yeah. featureless hotel. Enjoy. It really is. There is like, there is zero draw. Like you get you walk down the strip and you're like, all right, well we got MGM Grand. Oh, we've got uh, Excalibur over there and uh, New York, New York. What's on that corner? I think just hotel. Mm. <laughs> I will give them this. They're the first. They're the, they're one of the few hotels that give you free parking still if you want to just park there, which is what yeah. we did yesterday or that's, the other that's day. That's the way to do it. Yeah, I think that is the only one on the strip. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. Let's see, we had two places. This and the Fashion Mall place that has free free parking as well, yeah. but everything else is like twenty bucks an hour. It's stupid. Anyway, we're walking down past the flamingo which is not leaving everyone staying right there, <laughs> and uh, so we're walking past that and. This car, a convertible with a couple of twenty-something girls in it. Okay. All, all. It's like ten o'clock in the morning, but they're all ready for the for the rest of their party day. Like they're just sure. All Are they wearing up. sashes that say "bride" and "entourage" or none of that? Bride just, squad or something. like It was that. more just like I don't know. They just had these like tight mini dresses on. They just looked like they were going to the club, and I'm like, dude, it's ten a.m. But whatever, that's fine. I'm coming any... home from the club at ten. <laughs> yeah, that could be it. I have no judgment for them. But they sure had some for me. So here's what happens. Car oh, no. goes past, okay. and the girl, one of the girls yells, Quit bringing your kids to Vegas! Like that. <laughs> and I got kind of, I turned, I got a little Papa Bear kick in. Oh, jeez. And okay. I turned around. There's And there's a fair number of people on the sidewalk with us. We're not packed, yeah. but there's a bunch of people walking. <laughs> and I turned around and made some comment. It's in our Discord, but I can't remember what exact words were. But it was basically like, uh, quit bringing your sorry used ass to or something like that to Vegas. I said something like, <laughs> oh, "God, loud. really?" Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I said it, oh, and then I went and f off. I didn't even say the f word. I just said f off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Guy, about three, four layers of people behind me. I hear him go, "Woo!" <laughs> <laughs> It made me laugh so nice. hard, dude. Nice. It made me laugh. I mean, it it, it, it helps soften an otherwise annoying moment, but uh, I was just annoyed with her. I'm like, I'm going to the M and M factory. of freaking. Yeah, exactly. Like, you think this thing is made for adults yeah. to go to the yeah. Coca Cola place? The yeah, there's, you know, there's stuff a for freaking, kids. Well, of is there still a Sega arcade in the basement? Uh, no, right, it's a, right there. It's a man um, manifolds. What's it called? Oh. It's a clothes thing. Uh, yeah, Ross dress for less or something or uh, Marshalls. 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 Yeah, right. It, I, it right. made I me sad. That. I walked past her with the kids, like some old man telling stories, and I was like, "When I was in my twenties, <laughs> Sega had a big under a ground arcade here, and they couldn't believe it. They were so excited oh, to hear wow. that." Like what? How, why'd they change it, Dad? I don't know. <laughs> no one really knows. No one was told what happened. Anyway, uh, as a you result, know, and it's ten a.m. I mean, you know, if it was if it was midnight or eleven o'clock or something, and somebody said, "Hey, kids shouldn't be on the strip this late at night with people yelling cities in your mouth and yeah. handing out cards with nudie girls on them," yeah, then you can say, "Yeah, you're probably right, but still f off." Yeah, but, but still uh, f ten off. o'clock in the morning, and come on. Yeah, either way, f off. Is what I was saying yeah, to her. Exactly. So F F F exactly. them and their stupid freaking takes. Uh, anyway, it was really great. Uh, there was also a great shirtless guy at the Container Park. Uh, again, a great place for kids. Container Park's mm, very kid yeah. friendly. Yeah, All lots the- of stuff. Oh, great toy store there. Again, if it's still there, is it still there? It the is still there. Level? Yeah, toy store is still there. Cool. They got Love candy the stuff and donut stuff there, and they got a. A big area where kids make giant Lego blocks. And oh, yeah. A little climbing thing in the middle. Yeah. Right. Tons of kids stuff. Mm-hmm. So, again, and that's downtown. That's stuff for yeah. kids. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Kids are in this. I can't believe there are kids in this world. Kids in crazy. Vegas? I know. What? In- insane. Anyway, we're down there in the shirtless guy at Container Park who looked like he was not. He was three sheets to the wind, kind of not all together. Uh, mm-hmm. He would see any woman that walked by, including my daughter, including my wife, including uh, every other lady oh, that walked uh, by. He went... Uh-huh. Men are not worthy for you. You're—they're never going to be worthy for you. 
<laughs> oh my god. He just really? kept saying it. Just kept saying it. It was really weird. <laughs> So that was cool. And he was not, I mean, he was a nice crazy guy. That's what I like about some crazy yeah, people. Yeah. They're very nice. For, for whatever reason, I'm hearing, they're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. <laughs> it's like, they're never going to be worth, no man will be worthy of you, beautiful lady. That kind of thing. Jeez. And they could smell speak it. Speak for yourself, up. buddy. Yeah, speak for yourself, dude. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Van has a name for Vegas. He calls it Vegas. He can't He can't say, Vegas. he can't Love put it. a V. Just cannot do it. So yeah. the whole time, and there would be times we were like in on the strip in Vegas where he would say, yeah. when are we going to Vegas? And I'm like, no, <laughs> buddy, this is, this is Vegas. We're in this Vegas. This is Vegas. You're yeah. In the middle of Vegas. He goes, he goes, Vegas, can we go home and do another Vegas? I'm like, this is, this is literally Vegas. We're in, this yeah. is all the Vegas you're going to get, dude. Yeah, he never he could quite was, get it. He was thinking Vegas was something other than walking down a, a street <laughs> looking at giant fountains and. <laughs> oh, and he hated the sound those fountains made. By the way, the oh um, really? You know the towards Just the end the, of the song where it starts going like the big circular one kind of thing. Hated that. It was covered in his ears. Yeah, it really bugged him. Just a little sensitive to it, I guess. Wow. Anyway, technically, I mean, you're on the strip, you were in paradise, but you know, whatever. Yeah, you that's a good really point. Las Vegas, but you know, nobody would believe me when I told them that trivia. <laughs> really? <laughs> I go, you guys, we're not in Vegas until we get to the, like right around the stratosphere. There's a line. Yeah. And then yeah. you're in, then you're in the city of Las Vegas. Then you're in the city of Las Vegas. Yeah. But we're in this place called Paradise. They're like, no, Dad. Of course it's Vegas. The whole strip is. It says Ve there's a sign out front that says, I know that sign is also yeah. not in Vegas. Yeah. That sign that's is like, in yeah. Paradise. <laughs> That sign is incorrect, but no one wants to take a picture in front of a sign that says, Welcome to Fabulous Paradise. Yep. <laughs> that was a real to the internet then kind of moment for me. I had to explain oh, Of course, me. of yeah. course. And then you took screenshots of the page and texted it to each of them. Yeah, the that's what I do. I got to make sure everybody absolutely knows the truth. <laughs> They're, I'm a truth teller, Brian. That's what you I are. am. You are. a truth spreader. That's right. I yes. spread the truth like hot butter. All right. The other thing, uh, oh, and I already mentioned it. I just am sad I didn't get to hang out with any of our people down there. Yeah. But. You know what? You did, this was, this was not a let's do a meetup kind of trip. No. This was a, hey, let's, you know, let's give Taylor and Dylan some time to be adults and not be parents for a little bit. And uh, I just thought, and really, four, I thought in four days I would find a, a two hour slot you know i just yeah. thought i'd find something but i didn't i mean i'm even trying to figure out like we're going to be there in june almost uh yeah actually a month from now i'll be flying back potentially <laughs> we'll see <laughs> i might be changing a couple dates oh. but um all right uh, uh but uh looking forward to that trip as to just like here's a vegas trip that's not a uh, viva tms vegas trip where it's more like Ah, hit the pool for some just relax time, not have to think about, all right, do we have enough mic stands? Or, oh, where's that cable? Or is the, is the projector thing going to work this time? Or whatever. It's like right. just a relaxed time. And I'm hoping, like you, hope I get to spend some time with Mitsula and James and Svet and Shoujo and everybody we know out there. But they understand. If, yeah, uh, they're if, all fine. If, like I talked to James here and there on text, and I was like, okay, maybe tonight. He says, all right, just let us know. We have jury duty. I wonder how that went. I got to check in to see how jury duty Oh, yeah, jury, jury duty. Went. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Which, you know, is probably as a – is he still an elected official? He's still he's no, still on the council? No, no he's off? Okay. No, he's off. Yeah. So I wonder if you're once a councilman, you feel like you can <clears throat> never figure out a way to get out of jury duty. You know what I mean? Like yeah. – <laughs> I would think, go. yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe it becomes an even bigger deal because you don't want to be the former city councilman that that got out of jury duty. Yeah, right. Because right. now you're yeah. in the tabloids or whatever they do. Exactly. Right. If there are tabloids and Boulder. City, yeah. Do they know, even but... do this anymore? I don't know. Yeah. The Boulder City Examiner. Did you uh, did you do much lifting during TMS time? That sort of. Stuff? I did a ton of lifting. People are probably pissed off that I didn't do any Marvel Snap streams because I um, I said. I said Brian, and I said yes. And Brian, I says, yeah. I says. Brian, I says, um, and I, I basically hit lift hard the last three days. Uh, I've done 19 hours of uh, of lift uh, so far this week. Probably another wow. hour today. It's a lot, and a lot tomorrow. Yeah, I need dough like anyone, Scott. I need dough like and no, this is um June is the month where I have to pay all the. The licenses. I have to pay CSEC twice a year, but I have to pay ASCAP BMI, and one of my CSEC oh, payments in June. Right, and right. so it's like, let's uh, you know, let's make a whole bunch of dough to pay for that. 
Plus that, all off that off music, there. all those covers, all that stuff, you guys, that don't come free. Exactly. It yeah. ain't free. Nope. Um, surprisingly, again, with 18 hours of stuff, not really any good stories to tell. Wow. I, I met a lot of cool people, you know. Uh, I drove another uh, exotic dancer to work um, in a another completely silent ride just because you start off going, hey, how's your day going? Oh, good. Yeah. And if they don't if they don't say how's your yours going, then I take that as a sign. Okay, they want a they want a silent ride or you know just listen to music ride. Sure. Totally fine with that. Sure. But then you get the people who are like, oh, my day's going great. How about yours? Or oh, well, my day could be better. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? <laughs> I drove I drove that woman yesterday. She had uh, she was just uh, uh, hanging out with her partner and and showing her pictures of her cat, who I guess she uh, she lost recently. They were just. Um, crying over pictures of of her cat and then a song came on from Laith Cole I think Laith Cole uh Laith ooh L E I T H something Cole what Laith Laith Cole is what's coming up in my memory and uh she started singing along with it I'm like all right this is good this is brightening her mood excellent and mm. uh mm. and pulled up to her house just as the song ended I said wow couldn't have timed that better she's like no that was that was awesome <laughs> that's great so yeah, that's great. It's a little karaoke well, trip, but but no weirdos. Nothing, no, no like, weirdos. Uh, I don't get it. Where were they? Were all in Vegas? That's they were all in Vegas, apparently. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's that's good though. Nineteen hours. No, you don't I'm, I'm fine not having wackadoodles uh, in my car. You know, if I if yeah. I have a fun story to tell from somebody who's fun and great, great. But if I have to tell a story about oh, there was this dude in my car smelled like the ass end of a orangutan. Ooh. Then yeah. Yeah, nobody wants that. I can promise. Nobody wants that. Exactly. Well, good. Well, we had fun in yeah. Vegas. Brian had fun in in Benver and in, Den- uh, in Benver. Yes, yeah, Benver, and uh, we're, we're good. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, just a couple of quick food things. There's uh, if you're out near, like you've got to stay off strip south over near the airport era, area. Um, yeah. There's a couple of really great places to eat that we found, and one was the Broken Yoke. Great breakfast. Oh yeah. Yeah, really in the good. in the uh, town center over there, the the uh, yeah, like their the outdoor, outdoor mall thing, outdoor mall thing. That place is great. Tina and I yeah. have taken, we've dri- we've like taken lifts down there to specifically not eat at Mandalay Bay because the food was better and cheaper there. Yeah, that's the other thing. The price is so much better there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had another dirt dog while we were on the strip. There's another one there in the mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. one of the food courts there, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other place we ate was a Thai food place that was in the most hole in the ground freaking strip mall, but the food was so good. Is it the Taste of Siam? No, it was called no? B- D E Thai, like the letter okay. D, the letter E Thai. I don't know what it means. It's just a huh. weird name, but a uh, little tiny hole in the wall. Amazing Thai food, so cool. Good. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're looking for some, and they weren't, and that's another thing is they were not. Very expensive compared to the mm-hmm. rest of all of Vegas. Yeah, you go to a Thai place in uh, Resorts World, for example, you're going to be paying through the nose for for Thai food, and yeah. probably not nearly as good as some little family-owned uh, hole in the wall in a in a <laughs> badass strip mall or whatever. There was a there was a point in all of this where Dylan um, bought just got a slice of pizza and a breadstick at a Sparrow in the food court, mm-hmm. and he's like. That was eighteen bucks. I'm oh like, my god! I'm like, wow. I know, dude. There you go. Welcome to Vegas. It was long gone, or the three dollar buffets, and the, everything's cheap because they want your gambling money. Those they don't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Not anymore. Not a thing. But anyway, it was a great trip. Had a good time. Beautiful cool. drive up and down. Uh, went through a crazy rainstorm, but it was cool. Did you stop in uh, St. George at the good Taco Bell? <laughs> we we did stop in St. George, but did not do the Taco Bell. We went to this little <laughs> uh, cafe thing that my wife likes a lot, so we did that instead. But I, I thought about it. Uh, we yeah. almost did. And then um, what else? Where did, oh, we stopped at a place in Scipio, Utah. Uh, Scipio. Just, okay. to pee, just to pee and get some pretzels. And... Um, <laughs> Man, what a weird place that was! I got it. There's a whole there's a whole morning show on just talking about that place. I'm really it's like okay. a gas station combined with a hotel. So it had like six rooms on the side that you could rent and have it be like a motel on the side of this thing. The front of it's all gas station and convenience store. Total gross mess in there. Uh, the cheese from the nacho machine that all these places have was all over the table and floor. Oh, God. It was really weird. It was like being in a, I don't know, like a 
like Blood Simple again or something. It's like a weird Coen Brothers movie. <laughs> It's very odd. Oh, God. I, I kind of okay. want to make it a goal to stay there one night, just once. Really? Which seems, okay. right. seems right. antithetical to me and what grossed me it out the most. It really does, yeah. I sure. don't know why I'm so I'm drawn to it. i gotta, I got to try it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's it and all she wrote. Let's get Amy in here. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's other things that will come up because I saw there's all these other things. I saw a lot of weird stuff, you know. Yeah, I got a, we had a moth that wouldn't leave us alone. That's a whole other story. Like oh. we we fought a moth for like four hours. That's that's a weird thing. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah, okay. it was uh, very it was very odd. My All cat right. can dispatch one of those in about two minutes. Uh, we, should, we really needed your cat. <laughs> should have um, sent her over there. Here's this. One of the things that I enjoy also is reading. Join us now, won't you, in a little reading time with, uh, I was going to call her Miss Amy because that sounds like somebody who would pull kids aside to have them read it or does. whatever. Yeah, like, like she's got her own kids' TV show where she reads books. Yeah, that's what I was, oh, she hung up. Why? Uh, wow, because Miss Amy really pissed her that off. That really she got really to her. Yeah, does not like being told. Very Miss bothersome. Amy. Well, maybe she's having Kids' issues. TV show, shame on you, Brian. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Maybe she's got a uh, some sort of outage. I don't know. Let me um, be. Let me pause this while we find out here. Hold on, one and second. In chat, she says, "Dang it!" Yeah, that's usually a thing you'd write if things didn't work out. <laughs> exactly. uh, there you are. Hi. Ha- hello. I what? don't know what happened there. I just restarted Discord and everything worked. I swear, I set all this up as per. Of usual course. this morning but yeah the goal is you're As supposed to blame state guidelines and uh yeah, yeah. you're yeah. supposed to blame chuck that's my understanding <laughs> chuck! the way this is supposed to work is chuck is to blame because you know we learned this from mark and nicole <laughs> anyway it's good to exactly. have you here how yeah. was uh how was your uh uh week since we last i guess we just talked to you a week ago now that i think about it yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not really much difference for me other than, you know, I didn't have you guys to listen to, which is always well, sure. sad. Yeah. Um, and I kept looking for for a stream <laughs> from from Brian sorry, and and like sorry. I was like I was like honing my decks like okay, maybe today. Oh, then I'm glad. Then I'm glad I didn't uh... <laughs> Well, you'll be happy to know what little time I had to myself uh, during the trip. Uh, I read. I was reading books the whole time. Oh, look at you. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. So well, since what I, were you reading? So I've been reading uh, Scott Sigler's uh, Infected series. I started the first hmm. book. I guess there's a three of them. I, I, I didn't even know that when I started it. But it's this uh, kind of dystopic zombie alien uh, thing. And I love those, so uh, I love a good genre pick, and that's what I'm uh, reading. And it's very good so far, uh, so I would highly recommend it. I'm reading it on Kindle currently with my eyeballs because uh, audiobooks make my mind stray. I cannot stay focused, so mm. I have to read. Anyway, I'm enjoying it. It's very good uh, if you like that kind of stuff. I think it's a little older now, maybe, I don't know, maybe 2011 or 13 or something like that. But it's very, very, very good if you if you like, uh, you know, dystopic uh, novelizations of life. <laughs> if there was a zombie virus, uh, then you're in. You're all in uh, there. And it's great. Uh, very cool. Yeah. So, I've been you know, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Brian Bendis series. Oh, very um, nice. That's picked a- up. Uh, I went looking for some Scotty Young um like one of his graphic novels, the uh, Young Marvel or Young X Men Ventures or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. didn't find it. But I found this Guardians of the Galaxy uh, p- trade paperback that's got the Angela introduction, Todd McFarlane's uh, movement of uh, Angela into the um, into the Marvel universe from his universe. I didn't know they did that via the Guardians of the Galaxy. At it, least this this one was introducing Angela. I don't know if it was like a reintroduction because I could have sworn that it happened way before. Well, this was this was because Marvel 2010s. owns it now, right? They have the rights yeah, to her. Yeah, they own they own uh, Angela now, which um, used to be a Spawn character, right? That's and I could have so sworn weird. that she, like it, she became Marvel back in the '90s or early 2000s. But uh, uh, mm-hmm. in any case, this is a really good story about um, Angela and the Guardians. Funny enough, that's funny because prior to me leaving and a little bit while I was gone, I've been replaying that um, Guardians game. Oh yeah! Just with cool. all the Guardians hype going on, I thought, you know what? I never finished that. Let's get back to that. That game's great, yeah. dude. That game it is. Good. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I, will only... I haven't played it. Do you think that? Do you think that Scotty Young like does uh, 
young things like <laughs> do you think he does that on purpose like just like, to lean into his last name into or... his last name oh i see what you're just saying um no i'll bet you just it, he just started doing that and is like oh funny he he does these baby versions of characters and his his last name is young yeah I, yeah i'll bet it wasn't that you know i don't know maybe happy uh, happenstance is all that is probably I would, I would that'd be think. like right. someone with the last name johnson making a lot of penis jokes that's i, I right. just don't know if that uh, <laughs> that's right uh so all right well let's get to what you brought you brought some sort of reading material with you yeah I did. I did bring some reading material. This book is uh, another of the Fantastic Strangelings book club gets. So mm. we can go ahead and play the clip. Here comes your clip. I was in Sackville Street that day to interview for a job. People often ask how one gets a job at a bookshop like Sutherland's. In a particularly dark moment, when I drifted into some far corner of the internet on my search, I saw an advertisement for a bookshop seeking an apprentice. It wasn't a particularly good advertisement. The pay was Victorian, the expected duties nebulous, and the whole thing had an air of desperation about it. More comfortingly, however, no prior experience was necessary, and within a day I'd received a call asking me to attend an interview with the manager. On the day of the interview, I was early. Striding confidently out the double door, I gave it a hearty push, the kind of push someone might make who you would hire on the spot. It didn't move, instead of rattling about noisily, I yanked it. By this point, I could see shadowy figures inside staring icily at my abortive entry attempts, but I persevered. Pushing the right-hand door, I stumbled inside, mumbling a half-hearted apology, which was swallowed up by the diorama stretching out before me. It's the smell that hits you first. There's something wistful about old books when they're gathered in one place. They have a faintly unsatisfied smell, as if they're all distantly aware that they've missed their chance to be a worldwide smash hit. <laughs> I love that. That's <laughs> awesome so far. What is? What am I hearing here? This sounds great. Yeah. So this book is called Once Upon a Tome, The Misadventures <laughs> of a Rare Bookseller by Oliver Darkshire. And it is nonfiction. It is his memoir about obtaining and eventually keeping and training uh, to be a bookseller at this rare bookshop called Sutherland's. And it's as funny as as that bit is. It is, you know, it's, it's very, and the narrator is also him. Mm. So again, it's got oh, that, cool. it's got the benefit of him just sounding like he's telling you a story. And it's it's great. It's it's full of that sort of raw, wry, drit, uh, dritish. Yes, dritish. I, words. <laughs> yeah. Words Drill are dritish. good. Oh, yeah, drits. You can't. Dritish, you never know what the drits British are going to say. Humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my favorite kind of British today. humor, by the way. Is the dry British humor is my yeah, uh, preference. For sure. So that's good. Could is there a more British sounding name than Oliver Darkshire? By the oh way, gosh, oh, no. I can't. If there is, I can't think of one. Yeah. I mean, Darkshire. It's... Good lord, he's like all a, of a Darkshire. He's a he's a he's a he's a raid. He sounds like a raid, like a dungeon. <laughs> yeah, is there a Darkshire tavern, or am I thinking of something else? It sounds very it sounds real, familiar. doesn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah there gonna... should be. If there's yeah, not, there should be. be my Somebody raid go... team in Darkshire Tavern. Yeah, <laughs> write the campaign right now. <laughs> so, you know. Wow. Oh, you know what? So. There is. Darkshire. Is there? Okay. Darkshire in, uh, see, previously called the Grand Hamlet, once quaint little woodland village in Duskwood, but has been fallen in literal dark times, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm not, I'm not crazy. I don't <laughs> no. remember Darkshire. That's yeah. great, though. That's great. I re Now I rem I'm looking at the map. I remember questing in Darkshire. It's fantastic. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, well, this sounds uh, like a lot of fun. And, um, I don't know. Do you do you feel like uh, I don't know British? Why is everything British better sometimes when it comes to like books and reading and stuff like that? What's the deal with that? Is it just I don't us? No, I think I think people in I, I, particularly British people who who sit down to put pen to paper are very they they can feel the poetry of of certain words and you know like that would have been a very easy scene for him to describe sure, right sure. like mm -hmm. oh i freaking tried to open the wrong door and rattled it like an idiot and then i stumbled through when the next one opened with no problem right? right like that's how an american would describe that scene and it still kind of paints the scene for you but just the way he 
crafts the phrasing and you know his prose is it's just lovely and yeah. that's what a lot of it is like and he the, the entire book is like i say it's a memoir and it's sort of a collection of his anecdotes of becoming a rare bookseller and as you could hear in that clip he did not set out to do so he just needed a way to pay his bills and uh, hilarity ensues right like this kid <laughs> comes in he's got no experience he has no idea he's just like yep i saw the advert hello and there's this it's exactly what you would picture an old rare bookshop at least in my mind, it's exactly what I would picture because I did picture it when I read it. Sure, yeah. But it's just filled with stacks and stacks of dusty tomes. And he's, he tells all these little great anecdotes about at uh, first they sat him at this desk at the very front of the shop. And it was a desk that they had acquired and it was like Victorian and, and it was actually a writing desk made for young ladies. And so it was this teeny little desk <laughs> and, wow. and he's just, you know, I'm picturing like this awkward gangly 20 something hunched over this teeny little minuscule desk and having to smile and help would be patrons as they come through the door uh, you know, and and it's and as he progresses in his training and whatnot, he gets to go out into the field and you know say, oh, this person says they have a rare copy of such and such. Go go visit their estate, and he has to tramp through brambles and bushes and whatnot to, to even get there. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 that it's it reads like. Uh, almost not an episode of faulty towers but it's it's kind of there it's not as slapsticky as that but it's yeah. it's it's got that same flavor to it there's so. a there's an intro or sorry the forward in the book um it says a note from the author's supervisor this i guess this is the person that maybe you worked for at the time um it says that that bookstore has been around since 1761 oh wow good lord yeah. it's old that's really right? old you know you think of things that are old that's freaking old that's an old book. 1761 is pretty damn old. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the age, age things, that feels pretty aged to me. Oh, yeah. Well, that that's one of the things when I when I traveled over there is that some of just the the houses that people actually live in, not historic buildings, but just the houses yeah. are older than our entire country. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, I mean <laughs> I mean, well, think you know, there's a very important date coming up when that store was made about four years from five years from then it would be 1776 and then we would have some serious business happening over in america but this is prior to that yeah. <laughs> right? we didn't even exist in any meaningful way well unless you were a native here and everyone came in and took your shit but prior to, you know post that america was nothing yet it was amazing and there's still and it's still there that's still a bookstore mm -hmm. crazy nothing lasts that long over here you know then <laughs> Freaking borders. Well, not yet, they keep knocking but, things yeah. down to, to to turn into condos. Do you and, think uh, they'll ever be like right. 300 years from now? Someone will go, I can't believe Barnes and Noble is still here. No one's going to do that. <laughs> no, but there might be like in, you know, in, uh, in Virginia, there might be a cafe that was open or, or something that was open at, when the country was founded, still open or That's something. That's true. There'll be something somewhere. Yeah. You're right. Jamestown or they've something. Got, yeah. yeah, they've got Colonial Williamsburg is still yeah. there. And some of, some of the original structures are like the governor's mansion, things like that are still the original structures. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've been uh, they've been made into historical monuments. So yeah, yeah, I, I doubt that anything that's just normal everyday passerby kind of buildings will will last all that long. Mm -hmm. uh over here just because you know we like to we like to pave paradise to put up a vegas sign <laughs> yeah thanks joni mitchell yeah we appreciate yeah. that what's that it's covered <laughs> by paradise. adam duritz and what michelle branch <laughs> King lot. wait is the parking lot one is that the right song yeah and okay. the counting okay. crows also I right I well adam duritz from the counting crows yeah oh, i michelle didn't branch. know sure. i didn't okay. know the counting crows song was a cover i didn't know that oh yeah yeah, Joni Mitchell. Is every uh, song written. ever made a cover? I feel like there's so many now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy yes. to me. As a matter of fact, uh, yes. Scott, All right, are, yeah. there's the answer. Um, it is called Once Upon a Tome, The Misadventures of a Rare Bookseller, and it is only 966 on Kindle. 
which is like 27 bucks off or no 17 bucks off the normal price of 27 yeah. um and is available there or uh, of course audio version of it as well uh go mm-hmm. check it out it sounds and fantastic it's quite sh- it's quite short and the the chapters are really short so it's the kind of book you can just kind of pick up read a little bit and put back down and you won't be lost or anything it doesn't it doesn't really have so much of a a through plot as it does just a collection of hey this crazy thing happened to me while i you know at work so seems like perfect fodder for an eventual bbc eight episode series you know right like, yeah like, i pictured the same thing i'm like that especially the, just that opening scene mm-hmm. i can just picture him stumbling <laughs> through and some awkward foppish british guy is oh sorry about that you yeah know? and the music so. i can hear the music i'm telling you it's like made for this i don't know why it doesn't exist in that form already but uh do check it out available now and up on quicktms.li so the link is there right there for you if you want to just click it and go uh, Amy, it's always good having you here. Oh, and you won't be here next week. You got a graduation. Congrats on that. that Your son's graduating. That is true. Thank yeah. you. Yes, my son is graduating from high school next week, so I will not be here. I will be sitting in a giant arena nice. with lots of you know sweaty teenagers graduating and all of their ten relatives apiece. Yep. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it is I'm weird. Like, okay. We do the same thing here, and it, I hate it. I I could not. If there was one thing about child. Uh, raising children that I that annoyed me the most, it was their high school graduations for all three of them. Drove me crazy. All of them were a mess. All of them were too many people. All of them were like long and exhausting. Mm-hmm. I hate that whole thing. And every one of my kids yeah. after went, oh, that was kind of lame. We probably could have just not yeah. gone to that. I'm like, yeah. they, they need to do a, a, like make it so that you show up you don't have to sit through the whole, you know, the 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 salutatorian, valedictorian speeches and stuff. You show up for the ten minutes that, you know, five minutes before, five minutes after your name or the kid's name, or not even five minutes after. Why stay after, right? Five minutes yeah. before your kid's name. Oh, that will be at exactly nine seventeen. Great, we're going to show up at nine twelve. Sit down, yay! Yeah, pick them up and go. Yeah, <laughs> like have a reserved <laughs> exactly a reserved throw, time. Throw Ryan. your hat and then the go. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I uh, 100%. I'm a, I'm I vote for your plan and send it to the I'm not going to let my kid listen to this episode because he's mad at me that I'm making him go and I'm like, dude, it's a milestone. Come on, just humor me. I also yeah. made him go to the the, you know, like the, he's an honors graduate, so I he had to go to the they had an honors night thing. And that was probably much more what he was in would be enjoyable to go see because yeah. you kind of get to go and sit there and be proud of your kid but they only let two people go yeah. and so now i'm like okay we've got you know my mom and his his dad's mom and you know chuck and Every, <laughs> freaking everybody everyone. else in the family that wants to see him in his cap and gown so yep, yep. let's i get let's all go and yep. take the pictures take some hot sweaty freaking georgia photos after out in the sun oh my god it's gonna be <laughs> hot as balls in there <laughs> jesus christ yep you got some fun ahead of you uh we'll enjoy that <laughs> and uh we'll miss you but we'll see you the following thursday yeah. and uh we wish you nothing but the best and grats on uh the graduation it's awesome thanks have a good one bye bye you too bye okay there's all up now yay uh <laughs> you know it's right. funny i was i said michelle branch vanessa carlton was the uh the female vocalist on that and i always thought it was vanessa carlton featuring adam duritz but it is the County Crows featuring Vanessa Carlton. Oh, uh, and was voted one of the worst song, actually the worst song of the year two thousand. Really? By a couple of different sources. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's that bad. It just got it's, overplayed a lot. Uh, yeah, mean. it's a little sanitized compared. I mean, it just doesn't feel like it's as protesty. It feels like, oh, isn't that nice? They they put up parking lots and they <laughs> made a nice tree museum and stuff, as yeah. opposed to the what was supposed to be the biting sarcasm of the Joni Mitchell original. It's like that kid kids song, better run, better run, something. With oh a gun. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Foster like about people, a mass shooter uh, kid. Yeah, 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 but it's exactly. like, but they make it sound like a nice romp through the spring park or whatever. It's weird. Exactly. Yeah, Bobby Frankenberger puts it best. It's like the least Counting Crows song ever. I am a huge Counting Crows fan. I've seen him seen him twice and. Uh, Easily one of my least favorite things the count that uh, Counting Crows has ever done. It's so mamby pamby, and one, uh, one even crow. as a cover fan, it's like, eh. yeah, it's one crow that shouldn't if, have counted, is what you're saying. Yeah, that's count one less crow. Yeah, if we can have that one, play yeah. Omaha again, or uh, play uh, Rain King again, or uh, any of them. one of those, and skip skip the cover of 
of uh, Big Yellow Taxi. Nice. Well, good deal, everyone. Oh, you know what? We got time for one news story. Let's do one news story. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. In the news this morning, good morning. It's time for the news, and it's brought to you by... Core tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Scott, what is on tap for Core tonight? Well, it turns out a bunch of stuff dropped this week, including not not uh, exclusive to, but the uh, of course uh, the the aftermath of a very very popular now rated highest reviewed video game of all time, uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So you'd think, oh, that's enough for a whole topic, and you're right, it would be sure, normally. Sure. But we also got some weird mixed Blizzard news. For example. Uh, we got BlizzCon got announced. Oh, really? Don't know if I'm interested yet. Still waiting to f- kind of fill it out, but we'll see. But anyway, BlizzCon happened in November, <laughs> and uh, you they. Know, what would make me interested in BlizzCon? What makes me interested in BlizzCon is less about BlizzCon, and it's more going out there with Tristan and doing all this stuff that Tristan and I do when we go out to BlizzCon, yeah. seeing everybody doing the yeah. amusement park stuff, blah blah blah. That's the oh whole yeah, thing. con, sure, whatever. Well, because one of the things like uh, Overwatch Two dropping their PVE plans uh, will make a lot of con goers not happy. So that also happened this week, and people are pissed because the entire reason they were sold on the idea of of Overwatch Two was player versus environment content and they yeah. canceled it now so me included yeah oh, that sucks it okay, does well. suck so there's a lot of uh, stuff around that we're going to talk about it'll be a big full show and uh if you are interested at all in the world of video games you need to check out core check it out frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your podcasts cool all right let's do this story here where the hell did it go here it is Here's your first story, or your only story of the, of the of the day. Okay, all right. A 14-year-old arrested for stealing a Nashville school bus, and they led police <laughs> on a chase all along the I-40, uh, which is like their big, long uh, the, the freeway thing. Highway, yeah. Teenage boy facing numerous charges after allegedly stealing this bus from Kip Nashville Schools during a reckless drive through West Nashville and leading police on a pursuit along the Interstate 40 Saturday afternoon. This is actually a week ago now. According to the Metro uh, Police Department, the 14-year-old took the bus from KIPP or KIPP College Prep on uh, Murf- Murfreesboro. Murphy's Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. Burrow. Burrow. Murphy Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro Pike on uh, Saturday, May 6th. <laughs> it's a weird name. Yeah, um, just short for Turnpike. Yeah. This was pike. just before 4 p.m., so school was out. Uh, he was living in Antioch uh, at the time in uh, state custody. He hit the diesel fuel pump at Casey's Market in Centennial Boulevard. So basically just on the run, kept filling wow. up the thing with gas. After that, they said the 14-year-old <laughs> drove into uh, another place. He hit a car in the process. Oh, jeez. Uh, they followed the bus onto the interstate where it traveled at speeds between 60 and 65, which may not sound much, but for a bus, that's fast as hell. That's really too that fast. is extremely fast, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with something that does not navigate or turn, Mm-mm. you know, super well. Yep. It's gnarly. Uh, they also deployed a spike strip. I love these. I love a good spike strip. Yes, yeah. The teen driver allegedly saw the strip, so he slowed the bus and attempted to turn around in the middle of I-40 uh, West. At that God. point, authorities said... Not a great said, turning radius, believe it or not, with a, with a bus. No, not really a turn-on-a-dime kind of vehicle. No. You oh, jeez. So at that point, authorities uh, said they ran up to the bus, broke the glass in the door, used a taser on the boy. Taser on the boy. Yeah, tase that boy. That's right because he was trying to operate the bus and arrested him without further incident. Uh, the 14-year-old was booked in a juvenile court for vehicle theft, aggra- aggravated assault, evading arrest, reckless driving, driving without a license, and so on. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, you're going to have a real fun uh, couple years there, buddy, until you're 18. So enjoy. It's too bad he didn't. You know, it's Nashville. He could have at least picked up a couple uh, bridesmaids parties and, and uh, drove them around in the bus while yeah, he what had was it, it. What was he thinking? That's Missed the opportunity. Popular place for those. Yeah, I agree. Uh, funny thing, this reminds me what's going on here right now. While we were away, some breaking mm-hmm. news in my my city of South Jordan, Utah. Oh, really? Okay. Lake, there's some kid running around here. Maybe he's 14. I don't know. Uh, blow darting people's pets. Oh, my God. Yep. Now he's not killing them, just hurting them. Yeah. Uh, well, could, God, if he hits, you know, the, the wrong part of it, he probably could yeah kill them but here's what yeah. he's done so not only is he doing it to people's pets if they're out straying he's doing them but he's also he's also gotten a couple of people that were while they were walking their dog or cat got hit mm. and they still don't know where it came from they can't figure out where he's where he is oh little shit little shit is right and then uh he's doing it in people's yards where he can see stuff 
So we've been really careful with the animals and stuff about, you know, trying to make sure they're not exposed or whatever. Then he got some ducks and geese over at the lake. Mm -hmm. That's a felony. Yeah. Yeah. He's screwed. Protected. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, uh, I'm not always a fan of like, oh, well, whatever the crime is, the punishment should be the same thing. In this case, totally all for it. I yeah. think, uh, <laughs> yeah, line up a bunch of people, a little, a little blow dart firing squad on this little kid. Yeah, protect what's the his face. It's yeah, fine. put a little shield. In we're front not trying. We don't want him to die. Okay. Yeah. No. No. He can have but ice cream after or whatever, but we're going to shoot him with darts. I agree. Exactly. Or just the threat of shooting him with darts. You know, don't really yeah. do it. But it line all the people up, and then. <gasps> All right, now you're going to jail. <laughs> Just kidding, you're going to jail, but but you pissed your pants, didn't you, kid? Yeah, yeah go to jail. Yeah, you shit yourself, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, it's a stupid thing. More more on that as we as we learn more. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, my sister Wendy will be back. Yes, that's right. One week later, Yay! she's got more advice. We got an email uh, that all, email. all of us got. It's a great email, yep. And uh, Wendy yep. has ideas. So we're going to talk about all that coming up here shortly. Before that, though... A musical selection from Brian's vast, expensive library of music. Brian, what do you have? That's right. Brand new song. So, you know, this this didn't come from the vast thing. came from uh, today. Oh. <laughs> it got released by the syndicate, I think, this morning or yesterday morning. Um, this is a brand new. Listen, this is your summer jam right here. I like a good summer jam, so get ready for this. It's a song called It's Always Warm in San Araya. I don't know where Santa Rae is, but it sounds it sounds nice. Sounds, it sounds tropical. Yeah. Um, his uh, brand new album, debut album, is called Sunshine State of a Happy Camper, and it comes out June twenty third via MNRK Music Group. Um, this is uh, I don't know. This is a really cool little bit of a funk vibe to it. I dig it. It is uh, Cody Lawless is the artist formerly uh, performed under the name Known K N O W N. Mm -hmm. And then too many Pokemon people were trying to catch him. Uh, now he just goes by Cody Lawless. His debut album again comes out June 23rd. Here is It's Always Warm in San Araya. It sounds like um, a couple 13 year old boys with very deep voices. Eat recycled food for a happier, healthier life. This is The Morning Stream with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett. How about a booby? And we've returned. Tell me who that yeah. was one more time, that band. Yeah, Cody Lawless, uh, spelled just like you would think it would be spelled. Cody Lawless, brand new song. Uh, it's always warm in Santa coming from his debut album, which comes out next month, called Sunshine State of a Happy Camper. Nice. That all sounds great to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There are way right. worse good, things to listen to. Like you to. said, good old summer jam. Just get you in the mood for uh, for a nice upcoming summer. You should hear the song Brian sent me. Good Lord. That was crazy. Oh, isn't that great? That was amazing. I love the fact that the original title was Elongated Muskrat. Yeah. And it's <laughs> uh, it's going to be my new my new phrase for that one person, Elongated Muskrat. Ah, I see what you've done there. Yeah. yeah I elongated like it. Elongated Muskrat. Well, speaking of uh, things that live in Minnesota, I don't know what that is. No transition. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> I mean, uh, random. Not a chance. Uh, zero fall of I mean, muskrats. Yeah, there muskrats. might be. I'm sure. Sure. There might be. Sure. What do you got? You guys deal with the... Uh, well, I got voles. Voles, not, okay. Oh, voles, yeah. All right. And your... they're just cute mice with a slightly different face. Uh, I thought they were moles. I thought everyone was saying moles mm -hmm. this whole time. Yeah. Oh. Like the big oh, ones. No, voles. they're just baby ones. I did too. The first time I heard vole, I thought, well, why would you come up with an animal name that is the same as another animal that that lives underground and just yeah. changed the first letter? That's yeah. dumb. That it's got to be a vole. Yeah. yeah. Voles are, <laughs> voles, we have a lot of voles here too. Do you guys get, how are you on the spider front in Minnesota? How's that treating you? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I mean, well, it's... We've, they've taken Hill 125, but we're <laughs> hoping. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have never experienced so many spiders as I did in Utah. That was always, it's like spider heaven. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, you want to know what's worse? Freaking Nevada. There, we saw so many spiders oh. this weekend. And the greatest oh. thing happened that just about caused a scene that would have made the nightly news. We're at this Thai place, and a cricket got on Kim's leg. She mm. didn't know it was a cricket. She thought, it was a spider. And oh, God. Kim, okay. Kim and spiders do not get along. So she completely lost it and just started like <laughs> flailing and kicking and moving around. I'm like, we're all going to die if that's a real spider. We're all going to, we're all dead. 
<laughs> but then I got under there and looked. I'm like, no, honey, that's just a cricket. And she was fine after that. But boy, if, it, if that had been a spider. But we saw all kinds of weird bugs like that. That's just the that's the West. You know, that's what yeah, we well, have. Yeah, well, it's the dry. They're not, they don't have trees to hide in. They're just in your they're face. They're just out there. Yeah, they're making it happen. Yeah. There's always dead bees in the pool. Oh, that's the worst. Anyway. I don't always live fairly north of everyone, and there, things don't get as big there no. in the north because no. it freezes in the yeah. winter. It doesn't have all year to grow. <laughs> like when you right. were in, uh, was, no, where were you? No, uh, uh, what was it? Vermont. Vermont, geez. When you were in Vermont, <laughs> um, yeah, all you got is what? Like, uh, a couple of mosquitoes in the summer and that's it and everything else is <laughs> frozen oh, they or whatever. Have black biting flies there that oh, was a thing those are no wow good. you don't want those yeah yeah no, no. that's why every place has its thorns that's why it's why <laughs> you just have spiders and kim hates them so that's funny <laughs> that is funny she can't stand them she grew up in mississippi where bugs are bigger than dogs but for some reason spiders are really her problem Anyway, uh, well, it's good to have you here, and uh, it's of course my sister Wendy. She does; uh, she's an actual therapist, but she comes on here on Thursdays and helps all of us schlubs out with our problems uh, once a week. And uh, today's I think no different. every time it's yep. time for the schlub helping. Yeah, the schlub mm-hmm. helping. You guys ready to be mm-hmm. shl- uh, have your schlub helped? Well, good news. <laughs> we got an email from somebody we just thought was uh, delightful, and also Wendy thought it'd be a good one to cover. So we're going to do it. Uh, this is from Natalie. Uh, and here's how it goes. Hi, guys. If you have any, I would love your input slash thoughts slash suggestions on this. If you had to do, had in capital letters, an 8 to 10 hour road trip with your mom, how would you survive it? Now, there's there's more stuff here that matter. The trip is four to five hours to the destination. So it's about like going to, I don't know. I don't know where it's going. It's like going to Vegas. Yeah, not quite to Vegas, but yeah. Yeah, a little shy yeah. of that. Uh, visit and stay the night with more family and then drive four to five hours back the next day. So five hours in one day, Mm -hmm. five hours back. That sounds like a nightmare all on its own. Already. Yes. Yeah. One day and then turn around and come back. No, it's not enough. It's already stressful. It's not enough. Anyway. Uh, then she says this, some conditions apply Four people total, (laughs) your spouses and your mom and your dad slash stepdad. Uh, number two, only have standard radio to listen to. So I guess oh. FM or whatever. Yeah. Nope. Uh, AM, just AM. Because <laughs> chances are, four to five hours, you're going to be going through some areas where you don't have a radio station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Oof. Scipio. Uh, car is a crossover SUV. I don't know what that is. Does anyone Trying know? to give us the space ratio, like how much space. That it, crossover is just yeah. kind of like a smaller SUV. Small, the, yeah, the small like little a, ones, like the Kia. Like if this was a Miata. Kind of Kia Soul, Miata. yeah, yes, right? Kia Soul is a crossover. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. popular now. So there's um, some leg room. They'll be fine physically, I think, is what that's about. Yeah. Okay. Then it says, Mom is religious. She's 70 plus in age and believes we are living in the end times. Oh, no. <laughs> sure. Uh, and then finally, well, second to finally, Mom gets car sick. Uh, help me, Jesus. Sorry. Mom gets car sick, <laughs> so she can't read or take her eyes off the road. She's like British TV dramas and mysteries. Or she li- Sorry, she likes British TV dramas <laughs> and mysteries. You know, just like She's in all like... the British TV dramas. <laughs> it was a little bit weird. Um, the Gilmore Girls and other standard wholesome uh, stuff that's rated G or PG. So no podcasts that contain political, adult, or worldly sensitive material she would find issue with or be confused by half of the TMS content to give you a baseline. Dad is a go with the flow type personality and not easily offended. Wish us luck. Uh, I am open to ideas. LOL. Love the show though. Natalie, Alan and the cats. Um, Alan and the cats was a great band in the nineties. I really enjoyed yeah, their work. Yeah. yeah. Kind but of they throwback. struck out on their own though. Not, not, not didn't as good do as well. Not yeah. as good. Yeah. And the cats by themselves. <laughs> what a waste. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, so this is Are interesting. The cats going we have on all been trip. on this. We've all been on this road to Abilene before, For haven't sure. we? That's yeah. what it feels like. Uh-huh. Um, nobody wants to go on. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to go on this, including the people that want to go. They don't really want to go. Right. At least it feels right. that way to me. So, Wendy, what do you tell people like this? Because a lot of dynamic, a lot of family business going on mm-hmm. in one yeah. five-hour compressed ride. You know. Listen, I've been on so many road trips in my life, and I the key is a little planning. So this e- this uh, email is a great way to start this process. A little pre-planning, a little uh, preemptive work um, will go a long way. Yeah. So if you just think you can get in this car and drive this and have like, you know, your cheese it, it's cheese in a can spray yeah, <laughs> and yeah, meat oh, thins, yeah. <laughs> it's sure. not enough. You have corn to nuts. have more. Don't forget the corn nuts, yeah. 
<laughs> oh my and really gosh. strong smelling beef jerky mm. at any given moment you open up. Okay. You have to plan. And it sounds like I, I really appreciate all the conditions. That's really helpful. Okay. Yeah. So let's just take a couple of, uh, you know, the radio situation. How can we manage the, in, in essence, no radio. That's in essence. Because any music you're going to listen to on a radio is full of, it's going to annoy the crap out of everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I cannot even imagine doing this. Okay. So how can, let's, let's brainstorm together. How can you preempt the radio problem? What can you plan for or do differently? Well, I mean, you could swing by a Best Buy and pick up one of those, <laughs> plug it in, <laughs> FM, broadcast your iPhone yeah. through a, through a 180, which is exactly what I would do. Worth it. Yes. 10 hours, worth it. if I throw this thing away and never use it again afterwards, fine, worth it. Worth it. Yeah, yes. and then you can, can really you totally can control your playlist that way and give mom what she wants without her being offended, really. And and also meet yes. her in the middle yeah. on stuff. Yeah, that's a, I would, Brian's right. You That's worth every penny of the 15 bucks or whatever you're going to pay for it. Right, whatever it costs, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. and here's the thing. There's another preemptive... It, I, I want you to think about this as preemptive delight. I know mo no <laughs> one's thinking, oh, this will be delightful, but we're going to preemptively create delight on yeah. this road trip. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So think about a podcast that is rated G that's perfect for a uh, 70 plus world is ending. Like what <laughs> would bring her delight? It's she can't look around. She can't read. She loves British TV. We know a few things about her. What What is something she would like? Oh my gosh! I mean, all I can think Could of is you like, do this American Life and just make sure it's nothing that that is too world endy or political inclination. I mean, yeah, I think you'd that, have to pick. You'd have to that pick to episodes. Sure. Yeah, you'd have to find the episode yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, like I'm we, telling we, you, there are some British um podcasts oh, that would be wonderful right that's a that great idea yeah science -y or just like kid friendly that my kids love I, i'm trying to think of what the name of it is but it's basically like a news quiz show that goes through some history thing and i can't remember what it's called but it's great and they love it it's done in a british accent it's hilarious so mm -hmm. like find a kid kid podcast sometimes they're way better than adult podcasts mm -hmm. <laughs> like i'm sure. telling you so find a kid friendly history british based something podcast which will just bring delight Re listen to it first though maybe mm -hmm. yeah um, check it out. make sure so yeah. get a couple of those under your belt and buy that thing brian's talking about like do not leave this to <laughs> no no don't do it yeah i mean this isn't 1980 you ha you people can't go this long <laughs> without yeah. listening to something it's not it's not safe yeah, okay, or we, so that, when you and I were doing that in a motorhome, it was uh, Muskrat Love on repeat on the. On oh the, God, Captain, Captain and Tennille, sure, Tennille, baby. Yeah. And it was yeah. or the or the Neil Sedaka original. Oh my gosh, the cover again. <laughs> but it was like it was like that was on that whole eight track because it was an eight track was on yeah. repeat, and so it was just over and over and over. And you were you're bringing up the wheat thins with the spray cheese or the squirt cheese yeah. or whatever. Holy yeah. crap, that brought me back. That is so <laughs> mom brought a box of those and a, three cans of that to every freaking road trip we ever did yes. as kids. And do you know, have you even looked at the ingredients? I don't know what's in that, but I'm telling you, I do not go on a road trip without it. It is a staple. It's my not, kids will it's definitely not, not touch cheese. it. <laughs> it's definitely not cheese. I don't know what it is, but it ain't real cheese. It's <laughs> awesome. And with a wheat thin, there is nothing better. Anyway, yeah. Okay. So again, the goal here is delight. The goal is... And, and here's the, something notable. You are entertaining yourself. That's key. You, you know why Pixar yeah. and Disney make those movies with funny adult stuff that only an adult would see. It's because they got to get you to take a kid to that movie, right? Yeah. So find a podcast that's going to meet your mom's needs but also delights you. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's the point. Get, get your music straight, squared away and have something that she might be really interested in. Yeah. That gives her, and here's the thing, I get that when, how you've described your mother here is that, you know, she, she's, she's sensitive. You've got to be careful. You're not going to offend her, right? Whatever. Um, and so this is the easiest thing in the world to do is to expose her to something new that meets her standards, but is different than what she's expecting. That might be really fun for you. Right. And you can take a hint, right? She 
she likes murder in the British way. She likes mm. Gilmore <laughs> Girls or whatever. You know, find something yeah. that that but that is also entertaining for you. Um, is going to be key there. And then dad's easy, so that's nice. Okay, so then what else do we have? We've got you, there's lots of things you have to stay away from. You can do that. Just having a long playlist that is ten hours worth of delightful introductions and fun music. Okay, she's 70 plus. So speaking of Captain Tennille, is there a playlist you could put together of music she has not heard since she was a teenager? Mm, there you mm, go. Interesting. See, notice how I have flipped this whole thing from yeah. how are you going to survive to how do you make this so fun for your mom? Right, right. Yeah, Look yeah, at yeah. you. Yeah. It's because Mother's Day was recently, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. My, there, but you I'm know telling what? you, you're going to save no, yourself that's by really, doing this. That's a really good idea because you get her not even thinking about any sort of controversial topic. You get her yeah. thinking about, oh, my God, when I first heard this song, it was at the sock hop where I met <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. there's no person who doesn't want to share a funny memory or share something about their life. And I'm guessing yeah. mom doesn't have a lot of time where you are listening to her and taking her seriously if she's trying to tell you the world's ending all the time yeah right right yeah. so you yeah. are going to create a scenario where she gets to be you know clever or funny or walk down memory lane or and you're listening because mm -hmm. it's not totally triggering and annoying mm -hmm. um but you've got to create a mood why is there music in every movie because it's a mood creator yeah so, and the, yeah. even the, even the absence of it in some films is a mood creator. Like the yeah. whole totally. point. Of, yeah, the point of it is when it's gone, and you it's feel usually this murder corner. scene. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. rough. So man. guys, no music in your car for ten hours is a murder scene. Yeah, Don't do there's it. reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or irritating scratchy radio like don't do that That'll no make plus it changes all the time five six hours you're you're gonna you're gonna run out of signal and then change you're gonna, exactly and... you're gonna be constantly your most of your time is gonna be spent looking for another station yeah yes yeah okay here's another piece to do what did she cook you or make you or what snacks did you like so obviously I could give Scott wheat thins and a spray can of cheese <laughs> yeah. and or get him Doritos, in a boot, a you know? Dorito salad let's do Dorito salads in the Dorito car. salad yeah. and then Again, my kids would say it's the stinky beef jerky that they buy because it makes me want to barf every time I eat it. Yeah. Anyway, but like take like what is something from your childhood that was your mom expressing love through food or her own thing? You know, maybe she really liked Twinkies and you knew she was hiding them and so bring her a box of Twinkies. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like a Mother's Day trip. I, I get it. But what you're doing is you're trying to preempt and prevent um, kind of what typically happens you're braced for it. And so this is just, you know, adding a little delight and joy uh, at the front end. Um, and maybe you could ask dad, if dad's happy, go lucky, just say, dad, what, do you know what mom's favorite music was when she was a kid? Or you could ask him to participate in some way or what was his favorite music? Get just, I'm telling you, you get old people to think about the old days. They will not talk about the end of times. Oh, it was uh, Freddie Lord and the big band experience in the 1940s. Like, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is, you just got to find yeah, it. Yeah, take 1942, that podcast we talked about, right? The year of 1942 oh, and all that the stuff great. that happened. Yeah, I love that one. That was There's really so many things you can meet them where they're at. Here's the problem. When somebody is, I'm, I'm making a guess about who, what his mom is like, you know, I don't know. She is not one thing. That is her current iteration of the world is scary and I'm clamping down on my, the way I see it in order to feel safe. Right. Right. And so what you're reacting to is that you're clamp, you're rubbing to her clamping down. Right. Mm -hmm. But there was a day when she didn't have any opinions. <laughs> yeah. There was a time when she was open to the newness of the world. And you're right. just open that a little bit. And, yeah. And you're just, here's the truth. You're just doing a fun psychological experiment. This will make it more fun for you rather than dreading. So find a right. podcast called The Case for Atheism and turn it up to 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, maybe not, maybe yeah. not that. No, maybe I love this idea know. because yeah. um, what, what I'm gathering here, Wendy, tell me, if, tell me if I'm wrong, but it does seem like you've made, you're, you're flipping the script a little. It's like, we're all dreading this trip with mom, but now we're saying, we are going to make mom, we're going to make this trip great for mom and that will make it great for everyone. 
Yes. Right. Yes. And we right. genuinely want it to be great for her. We're not doing this as yeah. a fake out or a, a misdirect. Right. Like you're not saying, okay, how can we what what how can we build uh, some sort of wall that prevents this from being a nightmare? Yes. It's like, all right, how can we make this fun? I love it. Yeah. It's, Which, it's by a- the way, building a wall for someone, guess what it does? It hmm. makes them double down on their crazy. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And right? also probably so don't are, mention building a wall to uh, yeah, don't that, talk that about wall. walls. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> you, I'm glad you phrased it that way, Scott, because this is a helpful way for people to to think about um, sort of child, especially adult parent child relationships. Is no matter what, you can be a hundred, and your 120 year old mother will still be in the position of the parent, yeah. and you will be mm-hmm. the child. It does age is irrelevant here. The hard thing is when you're an adult and your parents are wackadoodle and you're just like, what? It's because you still on some level need them to be the safe place a parent is supposed to be. And what this represents is that she's not, that she actually can't meet you where you are at. This is every kid's need, every kid's desire. Meet me where I am at. And I'm asking you to flip that on its head from, you know, 30 plus years of your life to meet her where she's at. And that is actually what all humans need. It's just really difficult when it's a parent child, especially in adult, the adult stage of things, mm. because we are kind of still wounded from maybe how they didn't meet us where we were at as kids. And here we are still in that same arm wrestle of like, can you really see me and accept me? So when she does any of her stuff that's doubling down or religious or whatever, and you are just feeling like I still don't accept you. I still don't actually see where you're coming from. That's, that could be part of it. I mean, I don't know this for sure, but it's pretty universal. And then, so what happens is this is just sort of, instead of having that be the dynamic you're triggered by, you're just deciding, oh, I'm going to be the adult here. And that's, that's a flip. Most people don't do well doing that because they, we all still crave having a parent take care of us or care about what we like. Right. Um, you know, right. so you really are flipping it. It's legit flipping the script. Yeah. And it can turn into, I think, probably a real good time. Now, if you've got yeah. other little kids in there, you might have more of a contradiction, if, if that makes sense. Like you've got yeah. mom who's in her 70s, who her, her memories of good times or the 60s uh, or whatever, you know, and you're kind of building the trip based on what you said. But if you had like some five, six, seven and eight year old kids in there, you know, they may be like, Put on whatever, something cool, Fortnite music. I don't know. I don't know what they want now. <laughs> you know, something like something yeah, grandma's yeah. going to have no concept of. Like, she's just going to be like, what? Why are these kids, you know? Yeah. But it sounds like they're not going to have that problem. Like, these are no, adults no. helping they, adults, you know? They just have mm-hmm. to keep. And this may trigger a little bit of like, are you telling me I have to take care of my mom after I have had to take care of her emotions for, you know, right? So yeah. there's, there. Mm-hmm. this could go real deep for someone or it could be pretty surfacey. You're like, oh, I've literally, other than Mother's Day, thought, what does my mom need? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you meet you meet that need and you'll, you can see the magic happen. The other thing, too, is to have a couple of things in your pocket that are um, ongoing friendly. So, for example, you take a comedian. If you study what a comedian does, they will reference back to something they said earlier to complete a full circle of a joke right yeah sure and that is so funny you're all on the inside you all get it like there is a reason that gets sometimes most of the laughs right Mm -hmm. and so think of it in terms of what what along the way do we keep that sustains the sort of I don't know. So I'll give you an example. And this works especially well with kids, but it might be funny to do with your mom. <laughs> and that is, and my, my kids adore this. It is what we do every time we're in a, on a road trip. Um, and it lasts the whole 21 hours. Okay. Yeah. okay. And that is to play the license play game. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow. Where is this <laughs> okay. from? So little kids, you would maybe get a map out and have them color the state, you know, but we did this road trip, I don't know, a, couple, a year ago or something. And we found a Puerto Rican license plate people. I was so excited. We found Hawaii. Like those are <laughs> miracles, right? Yeah. And we got all 50 states by the end. And you would have thought we won the flipping lottery. <laughs> and it's because it took 20 hours to do. And yeah, everyone right. would find one and we'd add it to the list. And then we went, we drove past, um, what is that called? Uh, where all the president heads are. 
Oh, oh, uh, Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Oh, Rushmore. Sorry. <laughs> what's <laughs> Rushmore. what's cool spot. about that, what's great about that is that even if you are against the idea of doing that, like you're like, oh my God, this is going to be so horrible. I'm, I'm not going to do it. As soon as you do one, you're like, well, crap, now I got to keep doing it. All right. Well, there's a, <laughs> look, there's a, there's a, a, an Ohio. Oh, look, there's a Vermont. Yep. There's a yep. Connecticut. Yep. Like, the most you, hardened you teenager yep. yes. will, will succumb, I well, promise dang you. Dang it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's yeah. A, and so awesome. one of you just keep, pulls up your little notes and keeps track of yep. the things. And <laughs> and we literally started stopping at places just to go around the parking lot to get more name or more mistakes. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was oh very God, funny. That's great. That's great. And you they love it. down the aisles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then a book on tape that if, if you know, a podcast or get an audible or something, that might be some kind of fun British short story something you know, right that thinking helps about that because i remember doing a, a very long trip to vegas with some friends of ours in the 90s um and they were a couple and and the uh we, we took turns driving from somehow i got the overnight shift which was horrendous because everybody was sleeping but me uh, yuck. but um while one of them was awake he wanted to listen to the dark tower audiobook yeah which was read by stephen king and Number one, it meant we couldn't have any conversation because you'd have book, to, right? You'd have to like wave to get them to pause it and, and all that stuff. Uh, it was we were right in the middle. We didn't start at the beginning of the Dark Tower, so it was like right in the middle, <laughs> book three or something. Oh my! Which God. is where he happened to be. Yeah. This was the worst thing ever, and so yeah, maybe maybe not an audiobook or a podcast where you miss something if you have a conversation during it, or or even. More importantly, never re never get any audiobooks from Stephen King. He's an amazing author, yeah. but the ones he reads himself are terrible yeah. when he reads. They are them. terrible. His voice yeah. just is not good for this. There's that there. I'm grateful that the Dark Tower exists in like a whole other recorded sure. form. But whoever bought the version that had Stephen King talking, you made a terrible error. It's a mistake. Yeah, yeah. It's so bad. Anyway, yeah. So but again, maybe British not accent. an audiobook. British accents. <laughs> Yeah. I'm telling you it's the magic that's the magic potion yeah. um yeah so so maybe there's that so you, here you've got a game to play that kind of is ongoing you have something interesting you're all listening to you've got music that can bring you back you can play like if you were a teenager in the 90s and your mom was just like you're music and you're like, you know, <laughs> you could say, okay, mom, do you remember this song? And you can play some of your old stuff, right? Like, yeah. don't think of it as trying to entertain. Um, well, okay. It is about entertainment a lot less than it is about survival. And I think that's what naturally yeah. happens to us. We like kind of hunker down, like, oh, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And we're right. already expecting it to be terrible you're you're going into it expecting dread yeah. or expecting yeah, yeah. and yeah and, and then it, you'll get it you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah you'll get and exactly that's part what you expect that. yeah right you might be disappointed i think there's a, another thing that happens and, and maybe if this is the the premise to go with this might be helpful is just if you're only getting one side of a parent it's because the environment might not be introducing other sides to them that's true for you so if you're having a flashback because you're in a car trapped with your parents while they're driving, well, maybe there's some history there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also maybe there's some history for them of being like, oh my gosh, these kids and their complaints and they have to pee every oh, time. Yeah. And, right. You know, so yeah. this might just be a nice way to break whatever was the history or maybe you never did it and this is the first time or you always wanted to or, you know, it's a, it's a chance to build some relationship now. And one, unfortunately, adults who watch Fox News too much or, or just spend too much time thinking about the things that make them feel safe and like their, their world kind of gets a little bit smaller. They're trying to share their world with you when they're telling you the world is terrible and you should, you know, ban books or something, you know, like <laughs> they're, they're going to their place of connection. That sucks, right? That mm -hmm. sucks. But guess what? You probably are too in your own version of this. Um, and so we're just we're going to just throw the do the opposite. This is the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. I want to share your world. And what happens when you do that with people? And this happens in political fights all the way down to a family fight. When you step in their shoes or you get curious about their perspective, they soften. The only reason anyone has to double down is because someone is attacking or they have to in defensiveness. Feel, we act yeah, they feel like they have to defend oh. themselves. Yeah. 
Totally. Yeah. And it destroys relationships. Um, it really does. And so you're just kind of bring the, the different energy. If that requires taking a little gummy on the way, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, as long as you're not the one driving. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, don't yeah. be driving. Uh, it sounds sound like they are. It sounds like dad's the driver. Mom's the stare out the window yeah. person. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. maybe a little um, travel um, connect, connect Four or what's the battleship? I have, I have one of those. Do you need it? I'll what's send the, it to you. What's the battleship? You do need to be able to like have a little thing in front of you for pegs to go into for battleship. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. there's a there's a travel one. But you're in the back oh, seat. Really? Okay. I'm talking about the the back seat people, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Like have a little have fidget spinners. Have stuff in your hands. <laughs> do your knitting. Like create so and if you want to read and like then that's just maybe the calm music playlist right just prep yeah. for breaking this up with different things right and yeah. 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 And then there's some really great gas stations. I don't know where they're traveling, but if they're anywhere there are in some the Midwest, really cool. Yeah. Especially gas stations are especially, crazy. and they're so weird. They're they're like you I was telling Brian about the one in Scipio. It's like between Beaver and Cedar City or something. I don't remember where exactly. But this thing was like half motel, half gas station. All of it was weird. I felt like I was in a strange movie or something. Like a Tarantino movie was being directed in weird. there. It was really yeah. weird. And I love it. I love that kind of stuff. I love weird roadside attractions. Maybe plan a couple of those. So, you know, mom can get out and walk a little bit. Stuff that maybe she'd be interested in. I don't know. Like, yeah, plan ahead. Instead of just dreading it and getting in the car going, oh my gosh, we're not even, we haven't even left yet. And I already want to die. Like, right. Yeah. This is, this is a real uh, brain flip. If you can, if you can do it. Uh, good yeah. luck. Having just done yeah. one. Maybe I'll... just one of, one of the things that gives you one hour. Yeah. One hour less of your 10. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, see if you can uh, enjoy yourself. A little I bit. will say this, the, the fastest road trip I've ever been on was when we took Misha with us in 2019 to Vegas. And the reason that was fast is because Misha always wants to have a conversation about something. Yeah. Um, she's she's just ready to talk. And that was the fastest That's great. thing. So if you come yeah. at this with like stuff to talk about and you've really aimed it at her interests and all of that stuff, you're gonna the time is gonna fly. Yeah. But if you're all dreading it and you're trying to tune in the FM station that just went out because <laughs> the mountains in the way, like yeah. what a nightmare. Or even if you just put in your own headphones and ignore everyone, right. you know, you're, you really are getting into the teenage role. Yep. Um, right. so yes. yeah, isolate there's yourself some out. of that. There's some of that. That's okay. Right. But you, you got to give a little here. Let me say this about Misha. Why that goes fast is it's not Misha talking about herself. No. It's Misha asking mm -hmm. you a million questions mm -hmm. about you. And yeah. most of us don't get to talk about ourselves much. And if we do, we feel weird. Yeah. But she has a way of disarming you to find out information. She's very and good at that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so um, something that worked uh, for a couple of my trips to road trips to Vegas with the trivia guys was that we wrote or that we had trivia questions that we asked each other um, over the course of the eight hours or 10 hours. Right. We had like games or trivia uh lists of trivia questions that one person would ask the other two would work on them then another person would have their list when when they weren't driving etc and you could easily do something you could easily find trivia questions that are maybe targeted towards the their their formative years yeah. right stuff from the 1960s or 70s or whatever that are like oh yeah what you know what famous person said in 1974 blah 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 and oh totally. Open up conversation, get them to, to, you know, think about something else. and Yeah, a list of sort of, yeah, I love that. Anything that's yeah. going to, and, and you can say, like, there's landmines, right? You can find sure, them. Sure, of course. And you know you what questions not them. to ask. Yeah, Exactly, exactly. And you can even just set a, a gentle boundary if someone wants to go off the rails and just like, okay, no, go back to this question and just pull it back. Right, yes, pull exactly. Back. Because yeah. sometimes the talking points that they have immersed themselves in at this stage of life are just on repeat, right? And so yeah. tapping into like old memory and, and music is the fastest way to do that. Um, mm -hmm. It's just you're going to get a softer, different version. That's why every kid dreams that their parents will tell them like something real <laughs> when they were mm -hmm. younger because they don't, they don't have a sense of them being real, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. were your caregivers, they were grumpy. Yeah. Why is dad always grumpy at Disneyland? 
mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. he's hot and he's spending a billion dollars and it's not <laughs> even fun. And it's not till you're an adult. Do you get it? But that you can find, you know, people love to go back there. That's there's some interesting work with uh, retirement centers and um, palliative care. And it's this great combo of like recreating the decor and the the feel and the music of the era when they were younger mm. and their brains do so well, um, especially Alzheimer care. Um, mm. And then there's also things of like, you know, stop straining to try to be in this moment. There's like a, because they can remember a lot of the older things. Um, and then there's also this one where there's a lot of greenery and mixed a daycare is in the same place. So the kids are hanging out with the old people and the old people are hanging out with kids and there's dogs and pets and birds. It's like chaos, but like, it's how we're meant to, to live. We're not meant to live isolated alone. And so I think of, you know, we're not going to have your 70 plus year old mom with us forever or your dad, you know, this may, right. I don't want to get all pressury on it, but like, this may be your one and only road trip <laughs> as this stage of life. And that that's fine. And it may be great. You never have to do it again. I don't know. But like, there's a chance to sort of set a setting and, and be a little more intentional or thoughtful that, you know, it'll pay dividends. Yeah, say that. I agree. Well, we wish you luck on your trip. And I hope this, uh, I don't know, this is a good, good lesson about all sorts of like flipping the script ideas. You know? Oh, for yeah. sure. Just yeah. change, yeah. just change the dynamic. Like, Almost forcefully, not not in a negative way, but like I'm gonna change how this is. How am I gonna do it? Whole bunch of positive stuff, you know. I don't know. Well, and also, like Scott, you said Scipio. It is definitely Scipio, right? It's pronounced Scipio, but it's got a C, and and it annoys me, so I say Scipio. <laughs> okay, and okay, but, Scipio. Yeah, and Scipio. But this is a great example of like. You can hear someone else's accent, but you mm-hmm. cannot hear your own. Like Brian had to tell me that I mispronounced the word weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? You can't hear your own. And I think that yeah. is this yeah. is relevant to everything. Yeah. We cannot yeah. see our own stuff here. Right. Um, but if we try to see someone else's stuff and then react with kindness or intentional curiosity or uh, you know, t- trying to create delight, you'd be shocked at how that person maybe isn't always doing this thing that you're prepared for them to be annoyed. And I guarantee they're probably worried like, oh, I can't say one thing with these kids these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've got their own version of your accent's annoying. So, you know, we're just going to all be humble about it. We yeah. don't pronounce the city of Scipio the same. No, so, yeah. and it's okay, you know? It's okay that Scipio and Scipio live in the same universe. But we can't agree that any British Isle accent deserves to be heard. Oh, agree. <laughs> sure. No, no question. Hard agree. Yeah, especially, is... especially Fern, uh, who's my current favorite Fern uh, from Taskmaster. Fern. Fern. Uh, oh yeah. What was the last? Uh, you just said this. Not on Baker. This. Fern. Gully. Baker? Fern, Fern Gully. Baker? No, I don't know. Fern oh. Gully. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's Fern. Let me Gully. see. Let me see if it's still in my uh, search history. <laughs> Fern. <laughs> Fern no, something. Not. Oh, Brady. There we go. Fern, Fern Brady. Brady. That's such a great Fern name. Brady. It's amazing. It's so great. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, this is great. Uh, we wish you the best. And um, let us know how things go on your trip. We'd love to get a little feedback on the on the back end of this thing. For and, sure. Uh, yeah. Wendy, yeah, as always, please tell us. always a pleasure having you here. Realsteps.org, everybody. Go check it out. When things open, you'll know. And uh, you can read all about it in the meantime. Uh, anything else you want to mention before you go? Uh, no. Happy no. May. Happy we can talk May. about... Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to write in about a bad parenting moment, I had a really good one the oh, other day. Really? That I am happy to share. Uh, so y'all can uh, feel good about yourselves. As Why parents. don't we? <laughs> we should do that. Let's make that our. So send me a. Send me anyone got a. I forgot or I failed to do a thing or I did the wrong thing kind of. Because the question I get a lot with parents is like, have I ruined my child forever? And yeah. so we could talk through that. Because yeah, I would love that. I might have ruined my child forever. We'll oh, see. fantastic. I never did get those. <laughs> I never got those tennis pictures you tried to send. There was something wrong that day with your text. Oh, know. yeah. It's that was a picture of Pete. He looks just like. Um, he looks like Bjorn, Bjorn Borg. Borg. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. He's been wearing headbands around his long, blonde, curly hair <laughs> just the way Bjorn Borg does. And he's like, I like it. I'm yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> It's a very 81, 82 oh, kind of vibe. I visualize it, yeah. yeah Even though perfect. I'm not seeing it, I can completely it's visualize it. It's pretty great. It. And, uh, and then the other day, some lady's like, you know what I wish would come back? Those um, halter tops from the 70s. And then swear, two seconds later, I saw a bunch of uh, 
April's Instagram and some others, and everyone's wearing a halter top at these concerts. I'm like, I think they're back. I think they're so I'm back. thinking 78, 82 range is in. Yeah, guys. which is weird because that's a ugly. That's a time I think of not fondly. I go, ugh, what a gross time for fashion. Those particular yeah. years, but um, Let's do it. Part your anyway, in the middle, baby. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye okay. now. Bye. See ya. All right. Cool. Uh, Brian. Yes, sir. Look at yes. look look what we've done. We've done a show. We brought it back. We knew we could do it. It was like falling off a log. Yeah. Uh, riding a bike. Falling off a log bike. Uh what I completely forgot to mention earlier, and I can't believe it's already Thursday. That's this is all feeling very weird to me. But you've got a coverville today, right? <gasps> I do. It's so funny that you remember that. Mm. Uh yes, uh today the music of Paul Weller, who's gonna turn sixty five next week. Uh, you know him from bands like The Jam and Style Council. And yes, they did put out that album called The Bitterest Pill, or the song called The Bitterest Pill. Sure. It's not jagged. No, it's definitely jagged. Not jagged. Bitter, definitely bitter. Yeah. Or little. It's not jagged or little. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, The Jam, The Style Council, and Paul Weller solo stuff, all his great covers and covers of those uh, bands and him solo. Coming up today, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, twitch.tv slash Coverville. I am not doing... Um, uh, I'm playing Marvel Snap, but I'm not playing against people while the stream is going on because I cannot concentrate on both. And like between songs where I have to back announce, it's like, uh, I don't know, uh, put Beast right there. Oh, all my stuff just came back. Oh, put him there or this there. Sure. No, can't do it. So uh, if you want to play against me, we'll do a match after uh, after the show, but I uh, can't do it during the <laughs> during the show anymore. Look, you know your own mi- you know your own limits when it comes. I know to my that. own limits. Yeah, Nothing exactly. Wrong with that. Made some really dumb moves during some games with uh, with Red Fraggle. That's like, oh god, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can't have that. No. Uh, yeah. So that's nope. today, one p.m. Mountain. That's right. That yeah. is correct. Coverville over there on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Coverville. Uh, as I mentioned, core tonight. Uh, we'll have all the other stuff. Film sack this weekend. Um, Brian and I, Dunaway and I, are going to stick around after film sack Saturday and do our play retro we missed this week. So you'll still get a play retro before the week's out. And uh, what else? Skim tomorrow. Just tons of content. We're back in the swing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. huge Couch thanks party. to everybody. I forgot to mention this. Giant huge thanks to everybody for helping us uh, get through the Kickstarter for Dungeon Murder. We're done. Mm. We're it ended yesterday cool. at five. And uh, we uh, hit our goal. In fact, we 400%ed our goal, which means lots of extra stuff unlocked. And uh, that includes the final level, which had a big fat challenge coin in there, which I'm really excited about. So now the real work begins, fulfilling that damn thing. So <laughs> right. keep your eyes on the prize. We'll let you know what happens. And if you're like, oh, I forgot. I meant to do it. I didn't do it. Don't worry. When this is all fulfilled and done, we'll have some in the store. That's how it always works. Once we're Once we get everybody taken care of who was here in the beginning, we'll... We'll put some out there and you can get them that way. Uh, so anyway, thanks everybody for your for your help. Dungeonmurder.com for details. Uh, that's it. Patreon.com slash TMS to support our show. Means a lot to us. My, Brian mentioned couch parties just then. We will have a new couch party okay. tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, this is for patrons only. I do not know what we're watching it. Or did we decide? I don't we didn't decide. We could do the second part of the Quantum Leap Jimmy thing. Oh, we could. That could be fun. Let's do that. With the evil leaper while everything's still fresh in our minds. Yeah, (laughs) I think we should. We're going to go right from Jimmy to the evil leaper. That's tomorrow, 10 a.m. Couch party. Check it out. You know what to do if you're a patron. It's in our Discord and so on. Speaking of which, join us on Discord at frogpants.com slash Discord and partake in all the fun. Shout out to Tanner Goodman who gave out two copies of Tears of the Kingdom. One physical, one digital. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Did it just through Super our little nice. giveaways thing. We have a whole giveaways channel. I put stuff up there all the time as well. Uh, you should be over there if you want to win cool stuff and check it out. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I think I covered everything. Uh, everything but a song, so you've got yeah, one. Yeah, so you covered one. everything but the cover. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Jim from Northern California wrote in and said, Hey, Scott and Brian, on May 21st, 2023, my son Alex will be graduating from California State University in Chico with a bachelor's degree in nutrition and food science. I'm so proud of him. He's the first on my side of our family to get a college degree. Now he has to go out into the world and start adulting. I'm confident he'll do great in whatever path he chooses in life. To help him along, I I set up a disposable email to help him find a job. If anyone in the Tadpole community knows of any jobs in Northern California in food industry-related quality control, preferably in wine or beer industry, please email 
Alex really needs a job at gmail.com. That's Alex really needs a job at gmail.com. That's or great. just send him a congratulations email. He'll be very surprised. Uh, thank you. Signed, Jim. Scott, can I get a Veronica sausage? Oh, of course you can. Uh, here's one. Uh, where is she? Uh, this is a sausage. No, that's not it. Hold on. Mm, sausage. Yeah. Still yep. longer every time. Longer every time. Yep. Every Don't know time. What's going on that there. tape is just getting stretched. Yep. Uh, so Jim requested uh, covers by the Chats, uh, Australian punk band the Chats. Here's the thing: uh, I, they have two covers. Uh, one is of uh, uh, Metallica. The other one is ACDC. And neither of them really, I felt like, were good enough for the for the show. Sorry, Jim. But we're going to still go with another artist from Australia who sometimes is very punk. On this cover, she's a little bit less punk, but I still love her her voice. Uh, Courtney Barnett uh, contributed this song to a tribute to the Grateful Dead called Day of the Dead from 2016. Uh, it feels like a... It may not be congratulatory, but at least it's not a song like, oh, I'm sorry she left me and blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> you know, for, for congratulations on graduating. Here, here is Courtney Barnett and new Speedway Boogie. All right, that'll do it for us. We'll see you guys Monday for TMS and all the other stuff I mentioned. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then. Ferguson, Herman. Shit. If you like what you just heard, there's a very good chance you will like all the shows on the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Ferguson Herman. Oh, Ferguson Herman. Ferguson Herman. Ferguson Herman. Uh, Ferguson all right, Herman. we did it. We that was.